I'm going to read it. Uh, Matthew chapter 22 from verse 1 to 7. My Bible uh, is New King James Version. So please open uh, Matthew chapter 22 from verse 1. Are you ready? I'm going to read verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not ready to come. Again, they sent out other servants saying to those who are invited, see I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and vehicle are killed and all things are ready to come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those mothers, and burned up their city. And then at verse uh, 7. Uh, also, um, this story uh, is very well known uh, to Christian. Uh, this morning, I, I preached about Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to verse 41 about the will of God, uh, about faith. So uh, through this story, uh, we are able to see the heart of God. As you know, this is not a true story. It is a parable from Jesus Christ. But through Jesus Christ, he wanted to uh, actually tell us how can we go to heaven, right? So please uh, look at verse 1. I'm going to explain uh, from one by, uh, verse by verse. It says, first one says, and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, uh, like I said, it is not a true story, it's a parable from Jesus Christ. Then verse two, the kingdom of, kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son. So uh, verse two says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son. Jesus is, uh, you know, telling the people uh, about the story that he made. And through that story, the uh, people uh, like you and me can understand about the kingdom of heaven. So there's king, certain king, no, we, don't know who, we, don't, we don't know who is it, but he arranged a marriage for his son. But think about it. I believe there's some, some people who already uh, got married, even, uh, the children already got married. So uh, suppose you are parents, your son or daughter uh, gets married or already got married for uh, some of them. How uh, can I ask you? You can, uh, you can just raise your hand. Is anyone uh, that has a uh, son or daughter already got married? Raise your hand. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. So, suppose uh, your son or your daughter uh, will get married. Then, the first uh, pastor, right? The uh, junior gentleman, right? So, how was it when your child got married? So happy, right? Yes, yes. I'm definitely so happy. Yes. Blessing day. Uh, my children, the uh, oldest one is 10 years old, uh, so I don't know yet <laughs> that, you know, that your point, but it'll be very happy and thankful. So this certain king arranged his son's marriage, and he really wanted to share his joy, happiness, and thankfulness to the, to his, to with his people, with his people, right? So he sent his servants to invite those who are already chosen. Let me look at verse 3. Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 3. And sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Let me think about it. King sent uh, servants to invite them. We don't know who are they, but 
There are some people are already chosen. King really wanted to invite those people to his son's wedding to share happiness and thankfulness and joy with them. But what was the reaction from that? How was, how was their reaction? It says, they were not willing to come. They didn't come. In other words, they rejected the invitation from King. When I read this story, uh, this verse, I was very surprised. Everyone think about it. <clears throat> Who is King? Who is King or who is uh, like, you know, president of your country? If you are American, like, you know, the United States, your president, president is who? Uh, what is his name? I forgot. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> uh, what is it? Who is the uh, president of the United States? Uh, Trump, right? I'm sorry, Donald Trump. Wow. Actually, uh, I am the United, uh, U.S. citizen. <laughs> but okay, suppose uh, you live in uh, U.S. Some of them are uh, different country, but suppose uh, De Derek, the brother Derek, uh, if you are invited to some special um, not party from uh, Donald Trump, so when you receive that invitation, personal invitation, how do you feel? How will you feel? Very good, right? Yeah, you will be so surprised, right? Then, so he said, oh, please, Derek, come to my uh, special in, uh, party. So let's, you know, let's enjoy it together. Then what, you will, what will you do? Definitely you go, right? But suppose that day you have an important meeting, what do you want to do? Definitely you will cancel that, that meeting, right? Yeah. <laughs> then you go to a uh, special party, right? Yeah. It is an honor of your life, uh, your entire family, right? <laughs> what if you take a picture with, you know, the president of the United States, what do you want to do? Definitely you put on the uh, Facebook or Instagram or something like that, right? Yes, it is honor. I can't really think about it. So if uh, Donald Trump invite me to his uh, personal special event, definitely I'll go, right? But here, verse three, what did they do? They reject it. They reject the invitation from king. But let's think about the perspective of king. When the servants came back to the kingdom, and then they will say to him, King, the king, king asked them, Oh, how was it? Oh, king, I'm sorry. They say they don't want to come. But if you were king, how do you feel? You'll be upset, right? Not only just upset, but you were super upset, right? Really, really upset. What? How dare you reject my invitation, right? He chose certain people, but they reject King. Oh, to be honest, I really couldn't understand. But yeah, this is the story of uh, from Jesus Christ. So I, I could uh, you know think about it continually. Then everyone just think about the perspective of the King and his feeling. He really, really upset. He was really upset. But verse 4, everyone look at verse 4. Again, he sent out other servants. What did he do? He sent other servants. Why? To invite them again. Why? Because king still loved them, right? That much king really loved them. We can see, we can feel the heart of King, King really loved them. I don't, we, don't, we don't know who are they, but King really loved them. So even if he was so upset, you know, they like stretched his pride. But even if 
he was really upset, furious, but still he you know, broke his heart and sent other servants to invite them again. But this time a little different. King said, hey, wait a minute. I'm going to tell you one thing. He says, tell them maybe they misunderstand me. See, I have, have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fetal kittle are killed and all things are ready come to the wedding. Please tell them, all things are ready. I prepared food. I pre prepared all things. In other words, you don't need to prepare anything. All things are already what? Ready, right? Yes, servants, please tell them, all things are ready. Have you think about it? Who prepared all things for the for the uh, you know wedding? King, right? Why did he prepare everything for for the wedding? Because he is the owner of the wedding. Of course, the main character, main person is his son, but he is the owner of the kingdom. He is the owner of the wedding feast, isn't it? Yes. He is the owner. That's why he prepared everything. Suppose uh, if you invite your friend for your, uh, your uh, some dinner in your house, you call your friends. Hey, friends, uh, I'm very happy. You know, I got promoted. So please come to my house this Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, let's eat dinner. Then that means what? Who's going to prepare food? Me, right? You, right? When you invite your friends, then who's going to prepare food? Yeah, you're you, right? Why? Because you, you are the owner. You are the host. Here, the host, owner, is king. That's why he prepared everything to come to the way. In other words, People who are invited, they don't really need to anything. Just believe his invitation, bring his invitation and come to the wedding. That's it, right? Everyone, as you know, this is not just a story. The Bible has the, you know, spiritual meaning. Let me tell you one thing. Here, king or father in the Bible represents what? Who? God. God. Right? For example, Luke chapter 15. Father has two sons. The second son left his father's house, father's house after he received the person of uh, good, good to, uh, to him. Uh, prodigal son, right? So father and king represents God. Understand? Yes, everyone. The order of this, this wedding feast the king is the uh, the king. King prepares everything. Let me ask you one thing: Who is the owner of kingdom of heaven, everyone? God. Hallelujah! Right? Yes. Who is the owner of kingdom of God? A kingdom of heaven is God, right? Yeah. Yes. Then who has to prepare? Us to go to heaven, everyone. God Himself. Mm -hmm. God. Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yes. This morning, I I I talk about that today. Everyone, God is the owner of heaven, but God really, 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 us to come to heaven, not just one, everyone. Amen. Amen. He really wants us to come to heaven. But can we can we go to heaven? Actually, everybody in the world are born with sin. So we became sinner automatically from Adam, right? Through Adam. So no one can go to heaven with our sins. So then how can we go to heaven? We must wash our sin before we enter heaven. And today I talk about uh, the will of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. 
This is the will of God. What is that? Your sanctification, right? Your sanctification. So the will of God. Who has to fulfill the will of God? John chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus has to fulfill the will of God. That is why he came down. God sent Jesus to wash all of our sins. To defeat, defeat power of Satan, which is our sin. And he died at the cross. And Jesus died at the cross. Before he died, what did he say? It is finished. Right? So, Jesus fulfilled the will of God. Likewise, God is owner of his kingdom, which is kingdom of heaven. So he wants us to come to heaven. Now who has to wash our sins? Who has to prepare for us to go to heaven? You or God? Yes, Jesus Christ, right? In order to go to heaven, someone has to prepare for us about our sins. Many people are deceived by Satan. A wrong lesson. Wrong interpretation. We think we have to do something for good to go to heaven. Can you? Can you do something great to make a happy? To reach the condition, the standard that God want, you know, want us to be? That's not in, uh, in, that's impossible. That's, I'm sorry. That's not possible us to be righteous or sanctified by our efforts, by doing good things, not at all. Only one who can wash our sins perfectly is Jesus. Today, I want to talk about uh, the dead things uh, in detail. So uh, we just uh, look at the verse four, right? So it says, King said, <clears throat> I see I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fetter cattle are killed and all things are ready. Actually, this is what God, want, God wanted to say to us. Hey, I prepared everything. All things are ready. Just come. Just come to heaven. How? Believe in me. So everyone, uh, please look at uh, the screen I'm going to share. So here, you can see tabernacle uh, in all cases. So when, uh, the, in Leviticus chapter 4, uh, uh, when the common uh, person committed sin and realized that, uh, they have, that the person has sinned, then uh, the, com the person will bring his sin of offering with, uh, without blemish, which is uh, goat. And he came to a uh, priest. So this, you can see uh, the left side. The sinner, the common person, br uh, brought uh, his offering before priest. The beginning, he has sin, right? Mm. But... Uh, you can check the later Leviticus chapter 4, verse 27, from verse 27. The Bible says, He shall lay his hand on the head of sin offering. So there are two meanings of lay hands on. The first one is passing over. You're passing your sin onto the onto Lamb, God. Second meaning is becoming together. So when you lay hands onto the head of the goat, your sin pass to them, and you become together with your offering. So now, the right side of the picture, your sin passed to the lamb or goat, right? This lamb then, after that, this lamb is you. Understand what I'm saying? Your sin passed to your, to your sin offering, and he has your sin. What is the wages of sin? Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Right? Everybody knows, right? For the wages of sin is death. So, 
priest has to kill that uh, offering and take the blood of the lamb or goat and put uh, to four horns of the altar. So the reason why the priest uh, take the blood of the offering and uh, put the blood to the four horns of the altar is uh, you can uh, see this is uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 1 uh, you can check it later or you can now or you can see uh, the screen the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of diamond is graven upon the table of their heart and upon uh, the horns of your elders. So when you commit a sin, your sin will be graven two different places. One is table of your heart, right? The other is on the horns of your elders. As you know, the, the tabernacle, there are two different tabernacles. One is in heaven, the other is, is on earth. Which one is real one? First in heaven, right? So when you commit a sin, your sin will be graven two different places. One is your, your heart of the table, the other is horns of your altars. So the reason why the priest put your uh, the, the blood of gold to the four horns of the altar, which mean that is for right, blood blood out to cover your sin by the blood and then uh if i'm sorry if the priest upon it you got atonement your sins are forgiven but suppose you commit a sin again tomorrow and realize that you have sin what do you have to do you have to bring another offering another offering every day right that's why then the Bible says, in front of the table, tabernacle, the blood of offering is like a river. If you think about it, uh, how one lamb or God? The, I, I used to, I, I live in uh, Ethiopia for one year. So the, I, I believe there are uh, some of them came uh, from Kenya, right? So, uh, Right, you know, up above Kenya, there is a country named Ethiopia, right? I I live in Ethiopia for one year as a short-term missionary in 2006. So one day I saw it, the someone killed lamb. Then I asked him, how much is it? One, one lamb. He said, $30. $30 for one lamb is not really expensive, right? But suppose you have to bring your lamb every day. Can you afford it? Not easy, right? Suppose you are so super rich, maybe you can afford, afford it, but uh, not like me or <laughs> those common uh, people. So, bring or having the daily offering every day, not easy. That's why God gave another uh, atonement sin offering, which is one year offering. From, uh, you can check. Uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 16. It is different from the daily offering. You know, uh, God chose high priest who was Aaron, the older brother of Moses. He is a representative of Israelites. He's number one, right? So, uh, the, uh, the day, the July 10th of what, the year, all the congregation of Israel is like gather one place before Aaron. Then Aaron, high priest, lay hands on to the head of the gold. Then the sin of one year of Israelite passed on to the gold. Everyone, can you follow? Are you following me? Yes. Okay. So the priest lay hands on to the head of gold. And the one year of sin of Israelite passed on to the gold. And then there's one, the person uh, is uh, waiting for sin, uh, sin offering and bring him to the wilderness. Then 
while he was bringing the uh, goat, the offering, people are looking at what? He, their sin of one year sin is, you know, going to be gone, right? Once the person uh, arrive in the wilderness and just let it, let the offering go, then the, go, the offering will be died, will be dead by the animals, whatever. So then uh, one year sin, sin is finished. Everyone, this is the, uh, the offerings in the Old Testament. They kill continually animal to wash our sins. But let me tell you, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Can I ask you, uh, Derek, read, read for us Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1? For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commerce uh, through unto perfect. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, maybe you can check. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can read a whole chapter. Uh, actually, I just chose uh, one verse like this. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, for the law having a shadow, shadow of good thing. So actually, there are two in the law, there are two things. One is commandments, ten commandments. The other is the offering, two parts. So this law represents sin offering. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Everybody knows that shadow is not real, right? Shadow is the image of the real thing. And then that means the testament, old testament. Uh, how, when we uh, when the priest kill the animal, that you know ceremony uh, was shadow of good things to come. What is the good things to come? What is the real thing? Everybody knows that, but let me tell you continually. So the Old Testaments, Old, Te Old Testament uh, about the sin offering was not real one which in other words, cannot make us clean perfectly, cannot wash our sins perfectly. But they, those are the uh, shadow of good things to come. For example, I taught my son uh, animals when he was four years old with a uh, book. Hey Simon, look at this, this is elephant. This is tiger, it's iron. My son said, oh, yes, yes, yes. And actually the next year, when he was five years old, he went to the zoo for the first time. Real, like he saw the animal in person in, when he was like a five, year, five years old. But he saw the animal first in, in his eye. But he said, oh, daddy, elephant. Daddy, tiger, lion, he knew every animal's name, right? How did he know? He was taught by me one year ago, right? Likewise, God wanted to, God wanted to teach Israelites through the uh, Old Testament uh, sin offering when they killing animal continually, but when real one, who oh, Jesus, Lamb of God, come to them, they will know this is the real one, right? So uh, I will keep uh, preaching. Uh, keep uh, Matthew chapter 3 from verse 13 to 17. Uh, you know, Jesus came to, uh, went to John the Baptist and ask him to uh, baptize me. But John prevent, prevent, and he was surprised. Why? How can I baptize you? You are higher than me, right? You are higher than me. Everyone, who usually 
baptize you or other people, pastor, or you baptize your pastor, or you know, you know, usually the baptism is from higher to lower, right? So John, John thought John was surprised that he asked, she just asked him to baptize him. Why? Because he didn't uh, realize the will of God. But uh, she just explained to John, at verse 15, it says, Permit it to be so now. It is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then, who is John the Baptist? Mm -hmm. If you check uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, we can see, uh, we can see that John is the represent of the whole world. He's number one of the whole human. Then who is Jesus? He is <laughs> offering, perfect offering for us from God, right? When Jesus Christ is praying to John the Baptist, promise it to be so now, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. God wanted to give us all righteousness. So without righteous, righteousness of God, we are unable to go to heaven, right? So in order to uh, receive, in order to God uh, keeps his righteousness, all righteousness, the first thing that Jesus Christ has to do is he has to take all sins. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, he must finish all sins of the world. So Jesus is plain to John. Let's fulfill all righteousness. And John the Baptist realized that, yes, you are Lamb of God, Jesus. And finally, John, you know, baptized Jesus. When he baptized Jesus, heavens were open, right? In other words, before he baptized Jesus, heavens were closed. No one can enter heaven because our sins but when he baptized jesus like what aaron high priest he baptized the, the i mean he lay hands onto the head of the goat then the one year one year uh, sin of israelites passed onto the goat when john the baptist who is the number one of the whole world when he baptized jesus sin of the world passed on to jesus christ and John chapter 1, verse 29, I believe you know this verse very well. Okay, let me ask uh, Derek once again. Can you read for us John, John chapter 1, verse 29? John chapter 1, verse 29. Are you, are you uh, finding the, the, the verse? Okay, maybe uh, you can hear or not. But... Okay, I'll read John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away, takes away the sin of the world. Now Jesus is carrying the sin of the world, which is the next day, right? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about the sin of the world by this picture. Sin of the world. Everyone. We are in the world, right? We are living in the world. The, the world represents, a uh, world means it is from the beginning to the end. Who is the first man in the world, everyone? Adam. Adam, right? Yeah, Adam was the first man. Who is the last man? 
Jesus? Jesus, yes, we can say that. Um, you know, first man to the last person, fr from the beginning to the end, is the world, right? Before Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the, of the world, uh, fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, there was no sin in the world. But as you know, Romans 5 verse 12, by one man sin entered the world. So by one man Adam, sin entered the world and spread all men. So even if we cannot see the future, we only see uh, the past and the present, but God is able to see at once, right? From the beginning to the end, every single thing, right? Sin entered the world, which means your, your, your world from the beginning to the end uh, already uh, is uh, contaminated by sin, right? Whole thing in the eyes of God. Your sin of the world includes sin of the world. And Jesus took the sin of the world, which means includes your sin of the world. Not only your past sin or now, include every single sin that you have. Of course, people cannot understand. How about my sin I will commit it? Yes. Even in the Bible, you shouldn't interpret or understand with your own limitation with your human being why the bible says isaiah chapter 55 your thoughts is not my thoughts right god's thought is totally different from our thoughts god's method god's way is totally different from human's method or way so if you try to understand the word of god with your experience your humanistic way Actually, you, tr you, you can have to make something else or her heresy. So the Bible says, Jesus took the sin of the world. Increase your sin of the world. Amen. 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 And then he died at the cross. Before he died, at the cross, what did he say? I mean, people die at the cross. He said, It is what? It is finished. finished. It is finished. <laughs> Everyone, if you look at uh, Matthew verse 4, he said, All things are ready. Can you uh, follow me, right? All things are ready. Oh, it so is what? It is finished. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. All things are ready. It is finished. My sins are finished. Which means God already prepared everything for, for me to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. God already prepared everything. There we can go to heaven by Jesus Christ. Amen. So now, what do we need? Oh, only one thing that we need is Amen. Believe in the Word of God. But today, I want to uh, keep talking about after this, this uh, thing, after Jesus Christ died at the cross, Hebrews, I'm sorry, uh, let me share uh, through screen. Everyone, can you see uh, Hebrews 9, 11, 12, right? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> uh, I'll read. But Christ being come on high, on high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into holy place, having obtained a redemption for us. After Jesus died at the cross, since you know, he stayed you know, and resurrect, resurrected, and uh, he stayed in, in the, uh, in the uh, 
on earth for 40, 40 days and he was sent to heaven as your high priest. Where did he go? The Bible, uh, Hebrews 9, verse 11 said, He went to the tabernacle in heaven, which is greater and perfect tabernacle than the tabernacle on earth, right? So God showed tabernacle to Moses in the heaven, heaven tabernacle to Moses, and he made it, which is not a perfect or greater than the the tabernacle in heaven. Heaven, tabernacle in heaven is perfect one. And Jesus went up to heaven with not by blood of goats or nor uh, kelps, but by his own blood. Why, everyone? Look at this uh, picture. So this is tabernacle on earth and tabernacle in heaven. So, in uh, when priest, uh, after he killed his, the offering, he took the blood of the offering and put the blood to the horns of the altar. Why? Because when we commit a sin, our sins will be graven two different places. One is our heart of the table, and the other is horns of our, our altar. So, she just this is the uh, how the priest did in uh, in earth on earth, but when when the priest when priest you know put take the blood of the goat and put four four horns of the altar, then it covers by the blood. It means the, the he covers all his sins, and after he did and burned the offering, his sins is forgiven, but. They has to do again and over again. Why? We are living ram of the world, which means our time is keep passing. Even today, now we are having the Bible seminar, but one or two hours later, right now it became, becomes what? Past. All things in the world fade away. We are getting older and older. We don't like it. We don't want to, but we can help but to be old. When you're like a, you know, like you know, high school or the, you know, the, you know, teenager, you want to be older and older. But now you don't want to be older, right? So all things fade away. It's not. There's no perfect. Even gold. People say, oh, gold is pure, never changed, but. You know, in, 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 if you go to Korea, there is like a museum. You can see the gold from like 1,000 years ago, but the gold is all rust. You know, rusty. Like, you know, all things fade away because we are in time limit. Even if you committed, you committed like offering today, but it will be a uh, past uh, for tomorrow. So your sins, uh, even if covered, today but you have to do again cover again and over again if you uh if priest you know committed in on earth but jesus he didn't uh do it in uh on earth but he went up to heaven he went to heavenly place so here now jesus became a high priest blood he took his own blood and he covered your sins of your elders by his own blood. I mean, think about it. Heaven, is there any time limit? Is there any past or future in heaven? No. Only there is what? Present. How long? Forever. Amen? Amen. There is no past or future in heaven, only present. So even now, the blood of Jesus Christ is covering your sins. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ never dries up. Still there. How long? Forever. That is eternal redemption. Jesus Christ actually obtained the eternal redemption for us. He did it, not you. 
not me. He did. He obtained your eternal redemption. God wanted to punish us. But when God sees our sins on the horns of our altar, but God cannot see your sins anymore. Why? What things are covered? The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> but everyone, think about it. Yes, of course, your sins are covered on the horns of the altar. But how about the sins in your heart, table of your heart? Like I said, uh, he, uh, Jeremiah chapter, chapter 17, verse 1, when you commit sins, your sins will be graven two different place, places. One is your heart of your table. That is why you remember what you committed. Of course, you forget but many things that you committed, you re still remember. Why? It is graven in your heart of your table. So how can not forget it? How can not you know, remember when you committed? I lied a lot when I was in uh, college. I uh, mentioned this morning. I wanted to show you know me, my Ezra, like good or cool boy, but Still, I made a lot of you know mistake or not you know you know cool enough, so I lied a lot to my friends. But that lie that I committed, how can I forget it, right? That's why people think that oh, I'm still I have sinned. Mm. Well, let me uh, show the verse Hebrews 10, verse 16 and 17. Can you look at the uh, screen? Screen said, uh, the Bible, you can check even your Bible too. Uh, Hebrews 10, verse 16 and 17. 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those things, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. This same uh, verse, uh, which is Jeremiah chapter 31, from verse 31 to 34. God says, I will put my laws after those days. What is the those days? After Jesus died at the cross. He finished our sins. The Lord said, I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds, I will write them. So important thing is new covenant. The first covenant, the old covenant that God gave us uh, was 10 commandments. But we already broke it. So no one can go to heaven with that the law. Ten Commandments. So God knew that God, that's why God gave us new covenant after those days. But where did he record it? The first law he, he, uh, he recorded uh, to the table of stone, right? But he recorded new covenant to our hearts and minds. What is the law? New covenant, verse 17. Uh, I Let's read all trailer, uh, verse 17. One, two, start. Then he asked, I will remember no more. Everyone, God wrote, recorded this new covenant into your heart. Amen. Amen. Of course, we don't know. We, he didn't give, give us uh, any permission, but he didn't receive any permission from us. But he wrote, he recorded. The Bible says so, right? What is the new covenant? Their sins. Put your name. Daniel's sin. Daniel's law is this. I will. God, God, I will remember no more. Everyone, when, when God wants to uh, judge us about our sin, God doesn't look at our action at all. As you know, uh, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 16 he said that God looks at our heart, not our, uh, our, our outside, right? So when God checked our heart, God cannot see our sins. Why? He already put his new covenant, which is your sins. Your sins and their lowly deeds, I will remember no more. And God, wanted, God, wanted to check, God wants to check our sin again on another place where the horns of the, our altar but also it's, it's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ forever. Can God judge you? Can God say to you, you are a sinner? No more. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. 
it is very important uh, first. I'll, I'll read it. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor violence, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah, simply say that sinner cannot go to heaven, right? And he said, and such words some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Evian, so we were sinners. I'm not telling you we didn't commit sin. Everybody commits sins. Even if we don't do anything, we are sin we are sinners in the eyes of God from Adam, right? So we continue, uh, for sure, we can really go to heaven. Uh, why? Because we are a sinner. But verse 11, and such were some of you, like me and you. Well, everyone, when do you use the word but? <laughs> Can you say that? Can I say like this? My name is Daniel. Daniel is rich. I'm sorry, it's not real, but rich, but smart. Can I say that? Totally nonsense, right? If I say that, oh, Daniel is rich, but stupid. It makes sense, right? <laughs> but if you want to use but, you have to make you know, two different like opposite A and B, right? So we were sinner. Such was some of you. You were sinner. Derek was sinner. We were sinner. But God said to us, but you are washed. If God says you are washed, are you washed? Yes. Yes. But you are what? Sanctified. But you are Justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Everyone, it is not my word, it is the word of God. But put your name. But Daniel is washed. But Daniel is sanctified. But Daniel is justified. God confirmed that by the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Okay, uh, hold on. Okay, so uh, I want to go back to Matthew chapter 4 again, verse uh, 5. Matthew chapter 22, verse 5. Matthew chapter 22, verse 5. Uh, please look at your Bible. I'll read. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own, bump, another to his business. When God, when the king, when king sent another servants to invite them again, and king said, oh, tell them all things already, right? The servants went to them again and explained that, oh, please, God said, a uh, king said, everything's already ready, just come. But the Bible says, but they made light of it. In other, word, in other words, they made, they despised the word of king. They made, they despised the, the invitation from king, right? To us, we despised the word of God. Amen. God says, you are washed. But you, we said, oh, I'm not. And I tried to wash my sins. It is exactly the same thing that uh, the people did. And then went their ways. Went to his own farm. Or rather to his business. They went to their own ways. People still going to go to their own way to wash their sins to go to heaven. Can they go to heaven with their own way? No. The 
don't can go to heaven by their efforts. Right? No one can go to heaven by their goodness, good heart. I love Jesus. Jesus is my personal savior. Even if you say that, you cannot go to heaven. If you don't uh, believe the word of God as it is, which is what? Today, uh, actually, uh, in my church, uh, early in the morning, we have a, uh, the morning, early morning service. We are studying the first Corinthians today. Uh, we talked about first Corinthians at the 14 about speaking tongue and the prophecy. Uh, Apostle Paul uh, tells that uh, either speaking tongue or prophecies is okay, but pro uh, speaking tongue is to, to the man, to God, but prophecies to the man for edification, exhortation, uh, to you know have a good heart, the peaceful heart. But yeah, I'm not talking about you know, which one is better or not, but Either you're speaking tongue or speaking prophecies. What if you have a sin in your heart? Everyone, can you really uh, do speaking tongue with sin? That is totally wrong. The Bible says those are by the Spirit of God. After we, you received salvation, the Holy Spirit entered into your heart. Then Holy Holy Spirit will guide you, will tell you. What I'm telling you is, even if we said, "I believe in Jesus, Hallelujah," I'm like, you know, I'm, I go to church for forty years, fifty years, even that's so. But if you have a sin in your heart, actually, God really, really upset about it. Why? God says, "What all things already." First King, First Corinthians, chapter six, verse ten and eleven. Eleven says, "But ye are washed, but ye are justified, ye are sanctified." God says so. But if many people still say that I'm a sinner because I do bad things, but it's exactly the same thing that the people who did it. Actually, this story, the Matthew chapter twenty-two, is talking about. There are two different parts uh, from verse one to. 7 and eight, uh, 9 to uh, 14. I, I don't have time to talk about the, the second part, but the first part is talking about what? God, Jesus Christ, wanted to tell to Pharisees and scribes who despised Jesus. Pharisees and scribes, Jews, they were chosen people by God, right? But they despised the word of God, word of Jesus Christ. But here, let me uh, let me keep reading about verse uh, verse verse nine. Same chapter, verse twenty uh, twenty two, verse nine says, "Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite the, to the wedding." So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So king sent another servants to find them, to bring them, invite them. But this is now is different from the first. Whoever you can see, when you go to a highway, invite anyone. And later on, the, the wedding hall was you know, full of the guests. Who are in the wedding hall, according to the word of God? Only good people, right? <clears throat> Only good people, right? The Bible says, what? Both bad and good, right? Both bad and good. So wedding guests, I, I mean, wedding hall represents also heaven. So either you are good or bad. If you do good things or bad things, it doesn't matter in the eyes of God. But when you accept, the invitation, which is God, from God, you are able to go to heaven. Amen. Yes. Uh, through this Bible seminar, please con uh, continually attend it and listen to the word of God and have confirmation of your salvation. 
not by your action or thoughts, by the word of God, then you truly have peace and joy uh, through the word of God. Thank you for listening. I'll pray and finish. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much to uh, have the Bible seminar to share the word of God. Like a king invite the people to his uh, son's wedding, to his kingdom. God, you still invite many, many people uh, no, to go to your kingdom, heaven. Lord, many are, we are, we are preaching the gospel, this true gospel. Uh, please let many, many people accept and receive salvation. And through this Bible seminar, uh, Lord, let us have faith in our heart by listening to the word of God continually. Bless all of us here today uh, and their family. And please give your mercy upon the ministry in the Boston Church, goodness, Boston Church, and other ministries here too. Thank you so much. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you uh, for everyone who is joining us today. Uh, today, our uh, guest speaker was from Good News Vancouver Church uh, from Canada. Uh, did you listen well? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we are uh, keep. Uh, we are continually uh, have a Bible seminar, and tomorrow our guest speaker uh, named uh, Pastor John Choi from LA. So he uh, was a, a missionary in Liberia, where Jatu come from, and he is stung by a scorpion, and his heart was stopped four times. So, like, what happened if your heart is stopped? You die. Die, right? <laughs> but his heart is stopped four times, but he had a fellowship with Pastor Oksu Park, and he learned the faith. And by faith, he, were able, he was able to overcome the poison of scorpion and from the dead. And he's going to share testimony and also share some words uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, I want to invite all of you to join. And if you are not able to, uh, actually, if you have, to, you have to work in the morning, uh, I... I recommend you to like, at least join and turn off the video and at least you can listen. But as soon as possible, it's good for you to turn on the screen and we can see each other. And thank you for everyone who is joining us today. And for the uh, and next two week, we will uh, have a, a Bible, uh, we will start to have a like Bible study on uh, Genesis. So uh, next, uh, start from next week, we will uh, study uh, Genesis, book of Genesis as a series. Start from chapter one and then chapter two and continuously. So I want to invite all of you. And I have uh, some question. Actually, many of uh, people uh, didn't uh, join us today. But still, I want to ask you that I'm thinking uh, we are thinking to have a like, Bible study uh, in the morning time. And in the evening, we are planning to do some activities like Korean class and also Korean cooking class and uh, some other things. Uh, and for the Bible study, I want to ask uh, if we do it uh, in 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Will it be fine uh, for next week? So, Jatu, are you fine with that? 11 a.m. Yeah, it's okay for me. Yeah, and since the fellow is fine, I know. <laughs> right. And Agnes. Uh, is it okay if we do Bible study 11 a.m. tomorrow uh, next week? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we're planning to have a the Bible study 
uh, on Genesis as a series next two weeks, start from next week and continuously. Uh, 11 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. And then as an evening, we will do some Korean class and also uh, some cooking class and some other activities uh, by Zoom in online. So I will put the not I will share all the notice uh, to you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. And God bless you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Sheila. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh wow. Night, 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 night,